Your work focuses on a really interesting branch of science, using radioactivity. Why did you choose to focus on this? So I didn't choose to focus on radioactivity specifically, but I was really interested in working in an area of science that was sort of between very basic science and clinical science. So a long time ago I wanted to be a medical doctor and then actually I realised that that was perhaps a bit too close, so I wanted to um, do good in the clinic but without actually being in front of patients and so I decided to go down the science route and biology route and, um, and ended up in this field uh, of using radioactivity for imaging and, and treating disease because it's something that um, is super exciting, it's at the forefront of science, it's complicated and requires a big team of people mm -hmm. but it is also something that I know that if I do something well and if I create a new imaging tool or therapy then in the next few years I can see it being used in patients. So what's it like working as a scientist day to day? Um, it's incredibly varied, which I know every scientist says, <laughs> but nonetheless it is, um, especially in this area of research because we are a whole team, a large team of people, and we've all come from completely different science backgrounds. So some of us are chemists, I'm a biologist, um, we have physicists and engineers, we're in a school of engineering, um, so that just goes to show how mm. there isn't just one pigeonhole for a scientist, you just have to fit into a larger picture. And as well as that, we, um, we are very close to a lot of the clinicians. So today I had a meeting with two clinicians, for example, to see what kind of uh, animal work we could do that would actually help the clinic. So how have you used animals in your research? So we use animals out of necessity. Um, we here create um, radioactive compounds that can image or treat diseases, usually cancer is, yeah. is one of our main focuses. And we need to test whether the tracers, whether these new tools actually go where we think that they're going. And we can test that in cancer cells to some extent, but nothing quite beats injecting it into a living animal to see where in the blood it goes, um, where the blood takes it, does it get excreted via the kidneys or via the, the gut, you just can't mimic that kind of thing in an in vitro scenario without animals and of course we can't go straight into man so for us animal work is an absolute necessity to test whether these things are working properly. We're using radioactivity to create even more um, types of imaging traces to either diagnose cancer earlier or with more specificity than the current methods that exist in the clinic at the minute. For instance, we can look at um, the creation of new blood vessels in tumours, which would give us a host of information about how the tumour is growing and how it might respond to certain types of therapies. We are also creating new types of radiation therapies where, just like with imaging, we would inject it into the bloodstream and it would home to the tumour site but rather than um, sending signals outside of the body, it would instead irradiate very locally and cause damage just like radiation therapy does. But this time around only to the tumour rather than causing any damage to the, to the healthy tissues around it. The results that we see in animals can be applied to humans um, quite quickly. Uh, one for the treatment of thyroid cancer, mm -hmm. just like we saw in the animal images, that has actually made it into um, the clinic. Another great example where animal work has led to a benefit in patients is actually we've created a radioactive imaging tool that targets PSMA and again this has um, successfully been applied to patients with prostate cancer and again highlights the fact that we work um, with tools that can be applied to the clinic quite, quite well.